What's up everybody, we are back with another $2 deck tech for 2DH, format we created to have a new meta for Commander, make the game more accessible to new players and players on a budget. We've recently increased the Commander dollar limit to 5, but the rest of the cards in this deck are under $2. Boros has traditionally been the worst color combination in EDH without a strong land destruction plan, which I'm not a fan of that mechanically. I think it's kind of a feel bad thing. Uh, but recently there's been a lot of great cards that go along with a red and white strategy printed. Cards like Odric Lunark Marshall, Anya Merciless Angel, uh, Kalemni, and some other um, things from recent blocks that have really pushed this into viability. So. What I'm going to show you here is my attempt at building a Boros deck. It was way more successful and way more fun than I expected. I've actually been able to win some games of multiplayer, and I really like Aurelia as a commander, um, triggering those additional combat phases and just being a really powerful threat on her own. Uh, you only need to give her a little bit of extra power or double strike to um, really get things going. So, uh, in the deck here, we're going to have some card draw effects. Uh, there's recently been more cards that let you get this uh, exile the top card of your library you may play it this turn effect which is great for hitting land drops early and getting some value in the late game rebuilding your board state um, we've got some really powerful massive threats to go along with Aurelia to make those extra combats just dis really destructive and damaging uh, we've got uh, great ways to give keywords like double strike and otherwise double your damage and then we've got some fun shenanigans and two for ones. Odric is really powerful in this deck because Aurelia already comes with flying, vigilance, and haste. So giving your entire team those keywords along with something like double strike is just insane. And once you've got people's life totals down, Anya Merciless Angel comes in as a finisher. She'll be a 7-7 or a 10-10 and you can just uh, destroy people in the air. She's indestructible which gives her just a little bit more um, staying power. And then Heartless Hedetsugu, as he does in most aggro strategies and most red decks, is just amazing. Aurelia allows you to go to combat and even before the first points of damage are dealt you can tap Heartless, untap him from this trigger and tap him again. Then you'll be dealing your combat damage from your first phase and you'll have an additional phase to start finishing people off. So putting people to 10 relatively quickly with this particular combination is just one of the um, kind of gotcha moments this deck can have when powering through opponents who don't have a speedy start and don't play blockers. The nice thing about Aurelia is all of these things that say whenever attacks trigger twice, so Moon Silver Spear is a great include. Really what you need with Boros is as many cards as you can possibly have that win the game on their own, that can stand alone, that you don't have to overcommit to the board with. Um, so I've really tried hard to select those, find those, and dig deep and choose my cards carefully because those are all the cards you're going to get for the most part of the, the you know 14 or so that you start in with your hand and you draw over the course of the game. Unless of course you get some of this uh, cute card draw. So. Um, Stromkirk Occultist also has this kind of exile effect. It's uh, the red future site. <laughs> it's as good as you're going to get. Um, you've got Gift of Estates and Areskos Explorer, which are really nice in these colors. I mean, normally if you're playing like a green deck, putting a land into your hand is, you know, not that impressive. But in these colors, sometimes that puts three lands in your hand, which is just going to ensure that you're going to hit your six drop and then maybe even um, do two different things on turn seven or eight. You've got uh, Faithless Looting for a little bit of uh, filtering. Humble Defector. This card is amazing. If you can just get a little bit of politics going in your game, you can oftentimes have this pass back to you, and it ends up being two mana for four cards. So if you play things right, you can go a long way with this. Um, Outpost Siege has been around a while. Uh, again, these cards that exile, they're great for hitting land drops. They're great for Boros, where you can hold some of your threats in your hand and deploy the top of your library. When they whiff, they don't feel so good, but man, when you curve out with it, people just don't know how to react uh, when you're getting that card advantage. Uh, Boros is not supposed to have that 
Mask of Memory has been around for a while too. This is really great with uh, Aurelia having two combat phases. So for two mana to play, one to equip, if you can swing twice with this and connect, you're drawing four cards and discarding two of them. Um, really powerful effect in this kind of a deck that doesn't need lands after a while and can just pitch those and keep all of the threats. Recently printed Tamio's Journal. It's a little slower than Staffanin. Um, it's not as good, but the tutor effect on this is something that I underestimated until my opponent had a removal spell and I only had one white mana. And what I did is I sacrificed the three clues that were in play and I went and got a protection spell to save the game and uh, finish my opponent off that turn. So don't underestimate the buildup uh, appeal of this and you really have to respect cards like this in Boros because uh, it really is an extra card a turn in the late game when things have slowed down and your first couple approaches haven't uh, connected. Uh, Explorer Scope, again, not the most powerful effect, but it stops you from getting flooded. And when it hits, oh my gosh, you are ramping in Boros sometimes twice a turn with that extra combat phase. So for, for a small investment, I think it's a playable card in this deck. It's, I've had some success with it. And Sword of the Animist hopefully will stay under two. I love this card in the format. I love it in this Boros deck, and I love it with two combat phases. The plus one, plus one also isn't bad uh, with all these double strikers that I have floating around and the extra combat phases. This is it. This is my one mana rock. Uh, I think with Boros, sometimes people get trapped into wanting to rush the game and get things out quickly. But if you run into an Aether Spouts or a Day of uh, 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 Board Wipe, you know, suddenly you've just got three rocks in play and no card advantage and no cards. So I really tried carefully to select these cards and have uh, threat density in the deck. And Kalemni is just what the doctor ordered for that. Double Strike, Vigilance, gets bigger when I cast my General. Um, she is just a beater and can really put a hurt on people. They're going to run out of chump blockers eventually, and the Vigilance means they can't just um, annihilate you on the crackback either. Markov Blademaster, it's not the strongest card, but a lot of times there's a control player at the table that doesn't have a blocker, and this really punishes that strategy of no early blockers, because this just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and with uh, two combats it can be insane. Hearthfire Hobgoblin, when I put it in the deck I thought it would be an early cut, but with the equipment that I have and the ways to uh, buff power... This guy is actually a pretty good threat, and he, he puts a hurt on people early and gets those life totals down. Um, and, you know, double strike does entail having first strike, so he tends to stay on the board uh, through chumps. Relic Seeker and Thalia's Lancers, these are two of the cards that I'm talking about when I'm saying they gave us a uh, card advantage recently printed. You go get whatever equipment you need at the time. You go get one of these amazing legends that I showed you. I mean, this is exactly what this color combination needed to be successful, uh, is having these bodies in play and having a card from it, uh, especially the, the great cards that these can get if you build your uh, deck right. Wingmate Rock, another one of those uh, you know, mythics that's under two that's just pure value having all that evasion in the air i mean if, if you get double combat deal double damage i mean those three fours are they could be doing uh you know 12 damage per turn each so really we're looking at potentially 24 damage a turn here for five mana if the deck works right uh palace jailer so the monarch mechanic i was a little worried would be you know oppressive or you know ruin games or whatever, but it's actually been pretty smooth, um, and I figured with a bunch of people testing out these Monarch cards, what better time to build a Boros deck that, you know, is trying to deal combat damage every turn. Uh, I didn't jam too many of the Monarch cards in here, this is just the only one at the moment, uh, but I really like this because people misplay it a lot, so if you name their general, I found that players are putting their general back in the command zone instead of uh, into exile uh, against this guy, so... A uh, pretty big fan of it so far. Having Monarch in the game, even if you're trading it back and forth with one player every turn, you're still massively diluting uh, the card draw against the the non-Boros players who are generally drawing cards 3-1 to one versus you. Well, now maybe it's 4-2 to two instead of 3-1, to one, and that's going to be just enough advantage for you to get in there. Uh, War Priest of Thune, Durgar Hedge Mage. We just need two-for-ones. We need some ways to interact. We can't spend these guys... Um, uh, just 
willy-nilly. we got to hold them for when something really matters, but they're great for what the deck needs. Um, having the extra bodies on all of these things, you know, from Flame Tongue Kavu, and I mean, obviously these cards are great on their own, but all these incidental um, just bodies, they just end up in combat damage. They're triggering Battalion, they're getting Double Strike, there's all these uh, really nice uh, things that happen when you happen to have all your spells on a stick, so... Uh, and what an amazing uh, spell we have here with Inferno Titan. I mean, in this deck, he's dealing three damage on each attack, three damage when he comes into play. We needed more cards like this, and we've got them recently. Siege Gang Commander came back under $2. This card is just a house. When you are curving Siege Gang Commander into Aurelia, and then you're following that up with, like, Hell Rider and things, and, and triggering those extra combat phases, you're just really putting a hurting on people early. So, um... We've got some early game to show you here. We can't wait till turn four to do things. Hanwar Garrison is a bomb in this deck. Uh, we also have the land in here, so you can uh, meld at some point if you get both cards. But just by itself on turn three, you're going to swing with this a couple times. You're going to swing wherever you know someone's open. You're going to get all these extra one ones, and it's just going to um, help you do things like trigger battalion. And uh, when you get those extra combat phases, this guy is even better. So. Uh, and note that Battalion does trigger twice, so I've put as many good cards as I can in here that say uh, when attacks. Uh, this card's also great with the Indestructible. Um, the Odric I showed you earlier can give your whole team Indestructible during your combat, so you can just happily swing into blockers without even worrying about it. Uh, Torian Mahler, great early game threat. Um, this is just one of those cards that helps you not have to deploy your entire hand to be threatening because it's going to get bigger as the game goes on. Uh, Frenzy Goblin, Fire Fist Striker, they give you a little bit of that evasion. Uh, and again, these things can trigger twice. So uh, on your first combat, you swing at one player and make their creature not block. On your second combat, you can swing at another player and make their creature not block. It's uh, pretty powerful when you can stack it up. Uh, I like Lightning Mauler to give haste to things. Not everything in the deck has haste, and some of these things, like, you know, Kalemni can really uh, shock surprise people, and all of a sudden they're um, backpedaling and trying to figure out how they're going to get out of this because they're still two mana away from their board wipe, or they were about to tap out for a card draw spell, and now they're worried, and they got to play their general as a chump blocker just in case. And So um, you can really uh, get in people's head with this deck by rushing threats out early that are um, compact and powerful. Sultari Champion, it goes with, um, you know, kind of all the tokens I can make, but it's also really nice because it can hold equipment, so this is a great card to hold, uh, like your Explorer Scope or your Sword of the Animus, just to make sure you can trigger that every turn uh, when you do get stalled out because it has Shadow. Uh, but the plus one, plus one's great, um, again, triggers twice with Aurelia, and then Needle Spires is an actual threat in this deck. Uh, if somebody board wipes and they've got no blockers after that, you can untap, animate this thing, throw an equipment on it, and next thing you know, you know they're taking another 8, 10 damage that turn. So, uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the deck tech so far. Uh, this deck's been really fun to play. Some of these cards have been around a long time, like Sun Home, Fortress of the Legion. I'm sure if you like Boros, you've played this card before. Um, but we've just been getting so much good stuff lately. Teamer Battle Rage is just amazing. Giving Trample to, you know, something like Kalemni on the ground. Uh, Wrecking Ogre is a one-shot kill with Aurelia because it puts her at six and gives her double strike, and then you take a second combat phase. Uh, Gratuitous Violence just came under $2. Uh, and while it, you know, some people think that Furnace of Wrath or Dictate of the Twin Gods... Yeah, those are playable cards, but they, they're going to get you killed a fair amount of the time. Gratuitous Violence is one-sided. This is a really amazing card, and I don't deal damage with ways other than creatures. So in this deck, it's just pure gas. Citadel Siege, just one of the best cards um, for Voltron decks or decks that um, have a bunch of double strikers in it. It's another you know thing that doesn't die to board wipes but can make your next threat amazing so oftentimes my opponents have to board wipe before i even cast aurelia for the first time and so then when i cast her hey she's a you know five power two combat so they're taking 10 that turn berserkers onslaught attacking creatures you control have double strike we're not on the back foot too much double strike isn't as important on defense what we're doing in this deck is we're bashing people's faces and Berserker's Onslaught and True Conviction just give you so much power and it just uh, it's like taking an extra turn in these colors basically. 
Marshall's Anthem, The Ultimate Comeback. This is like the White Praetor's Council here. Uh, you pull this in the late game with 10 mana open, and the next thing you know, boom, 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 you are back in business, and uh, you know everyone in the game all of a sudden is like, oh, crap, what are we going to do about this guy? And it's also an Anthem, so uh, all these cards are just really compact, powerful threats. You throw things like Grafted War Gear in there and Hero's Blade, and the next thing you know, um, you're really able to one-shot people with your General, or you're able to uh, annihilate them with your Double Strikers, or make your, you know, your little leftovers from Board Wipes actual threats. So um, really nice in this deck to have a mix of enchantments and artifacts and creatures to wreck people with. Reckless Charge, uh, card advantage with that flashback. Again, not everything has haste, and even if it does have haste, sometimes just giving it plus three is going to be a really strong effect. And there's our land that gives things haste as well. So we have packed as much punch as we possibly can. We had to save a little bit of room for shenanigans and removal. So here's what we got, Master Warcraft. Uh, if you've never cast this card, it's really fun. You can make your opponent block with their threats that are smaller than yours. Um, you can make it so they don't block at all and just swing for damage. The fact that it's an instant is pretty interesting too because uh, once an opponent has tacked another opponent, you can make it so that their creatures block a certain way. So really cool card. Uh, nice utility here with Order Chaos. Generally, we're going to be casting the Chaos side, but... As you guys know, in EDH, there's always something that you you know might need to exile when it's swinging at you. So there you go. Chain to the Rocks, great efficient removal spell. Um, this is great in the early game with cards like Flame Speaker, where you just need to get through and hit some land drops or whatever. Um, and it's great in the late game, just removing threats. Uh, Oblivion Ring, obviously you guys were expecting that in the deck. Um, I didn't run too many board wipes. Uh, all I have in here is Mizium Mortars. I know that white has the best removal in magic, but we're not trying to destroy the board, we're trying to be the board. And Mizium Mortars clears the way for two, or it can really slow down all those like elf decks and ETB decks for six and just take out everyone's stuff while you're swinging through. Wear Tear, just one of the best cards in the format. Um, instant speed, it's just what the doctor ordered. Nice, efficient, powerful two for one. Famico the Low Blood. This is in here because it forces all the creatures to attack. And when creatures are attacking, they're not blocking. And even if they're attacking you, you probably don't care that much. You've probably got some powerful blockers and you're going to annihilate them on the crackback. And my new favorite card, Right of the Raging Storm. This card is so fun. People can't help but swing with the five ones. They can't swing them at you. It helps you trigger Battalion. You can put equipment on the five ones. Your five one gets double combats or double strike. It's just hilarious. It's so great. And it has trample. What more do you want out of a magic card? I mean, it's so much fun. And with Famico in play, they have to attack each other, which is really hilarious. Mob Rule is the finisher that we need when the board uh, state is really stalled out, especially if you have Aurelia in play because you're swinging twice with all that stuff. Now, I don't have a bunch of sack outlets in the deck or anything to really take advantage of this card, but this card is a finisher. You are just going to eliminate a player from the game right then and there and whittle down uh, how many players are there, and that increases your odds of winning because everyone knows Boros is better when you're not playing four player. Uh, we've got Swift Foot Boots for protection. God's Willing has always been one of my favorite protection spells. It's really strong when someone is counting on that removal spell to connect, and it can also blank um, things like red board wipes by giving the creature protection from the damage that would be dealt. Angelic Renewal is a sweet little gem that works great in this deck. You're not deploying a ton of powerful threats on turn two, but you are deploying your protection spell. And when they destroy Aurelia as you try to move to combat, you put her right back in play and you go right back to swinging with her because she has haste. So really great card for this deck. Uh, try this out in your white decks if you've never played it. I love the card. And finally, we chose Make a Stand as our creatures are indestructible till end of turn. Um, I think it's more... Uh, has more upside than the one with Populate, since I don't make a lot of tokens that uh, would massively impact the board. I do think the plus one plus oh is a better effect. So, it took me a long time to explain myself, because everyone knows Boros is terrible and you should never play it. 
unless you can do it right. And I think I have here. I think I'm on to something. I hope they continue to give red some card advantage spells and give uh, red-white some powerful creatures to keep the aggro train rolling. We need more aggro in EDH. Games are not that fun when you have four control players at the table. The full list for Aurelia can be found in the links below. Thank you for watching. You can also go to $2magic.com to see more. We also have a Facebook group in the link below. So I will see you guys next time. Till then, happy combat phases.